Hello and welcome to this review of my Chaconi KB5161C. It is a member of a not that uncommon family of keyboards based on the Alps Bigfoot design. I think this one was made in the late 80s, but the case or controller chip doesn't appear to list a manufacture date. The PCB says 1988, but I don't know how representative that is. There are several sub-models of 5161. Each one can, in typical Chaconi fashion, come with several types of switches. The first is the F model. This one. I have one and I recently redid the review on this from scratch. Check out the link in the video description below if you're interested. The second model is the A model, which has N key rollover and which can be readily recognized from the FCC ID, which ends in an A. The other models don't. And then there's this one, the C model, which doesn't appear to be different from the F model in any way other than perhaps the types of switches it can come with. The case strongly resembles that of the Dell 8101 and they are similarly well built. So it can definitely take a bit of a beating. It uses ABS keycaps with what appears to be either rimless pad printing or really superficial dye sublimed ink printing. And you can see that it's come off and some of the more well used keys, it's kind of faded. So my bet is with pad printing, but I'm not completely sure. The other one, the F model that I have is in pretty much pristine condition. So it's very hard to judge what kind of printing that has, but I'm guessing they used the same kind of printing. This particular one comes with amber or yellow Omron switches, which are a fairly rare switch with an intriguing reputation for extreme clickiness. They're based on the Alps switch design, which is already very noisy. In fact, the F I showed you earlier has white Alps switches, which are the noisiest switch Alps ever made, and that's saying something. Even linear and non-clicky tactile Alps are very loud, and the sound of these white Alps is really nice, but it's definitely not for librarians. Let me demonstrate that for you. These Omrons, though, oh my god, they're even louder. They sound like a swarm of angry staplers on steroids furiously attacking a roll of tin foil, or even a bit like an old typewriter. I measured the noise levels with a decibel meter app on my phone and compared them to White Alps as well as that of a Model M, and the results say it's slightly louder than both of them. And the reason for this appears to be that the clicker mechanism sound is much much louder with the Omrons, three to five times louder in fact, and the difference in overall loudness is not so much due to the impact of hitting the bottom of the switch. Here's a quick demo of the clicker of the Omron versus that of the Alp switches. So you should be able to tell, hopefully, that the Omron clicker is a lot louder. It uses an Alps-like switchblade with an almost identical leaf spring for the contact on the front of it, but it has a rather unique three-pin linear pinout, which is not compatible with Alps or any other Alps-like boards that I know of. And then there is the clicker, which has two separate teeth, and it's much more flexible at the front than the click mechanism of Alps switches. And then finally, there's the slider, which is reversible and completely symmetrical. Now, the way I think it works here is that because the front of the click mechanism is much more flexible, it is allowed to be pulled forward much more than that with an Alps plate. So the click happens further down the key travel too, but it still has the high actuation point of Alps switches. So there is a Grand Canyon sized gap between actuation and click. Let me show that here to you. Just look how far I can push this slider before it clicks. There you go. Now the slider is almost all the way down already. The secondary effect of this system is that there is no hysteresis because the actuation happens at a point where the clicker has not been engaged at all. And the tertiary effect is that the switches are really, really tactile, so overall they feel and sound like a much more extreme version of Alps switches. 
These switches also don't appear to be hugely reliable because I actually had two of these boards and although the switches didn't look damaged or dirty in any way, they both had quite a few malfunctioning ones. This board had 14 malfunctioning switches and the other one had 34 malfunctioning switches. So I desoldered the broken switches from this board and substituted in working ones from the other keyboard to make one fully functioning keyboard. The rest of the switches I'm keeping as backups yeah. Some of the other keys suffer from bouncing a bit, so they sometimes register double key presses. The key feel isn't bad though. It's very tactile, as I mentioned before, and it's reasonably smooth and consistent across the board. The other keyboard used a special white switch for the spacebar, which is much stiffer. But this one, even though it is exactly the same model, has a normal amber colored one. Overall, this board is a bit of an oddity, but it's pretty fun and it's well built. The switches are almost laughably loud and not the most accurate for typing, nor hugely practical for gaming, nor do they appear to be very reliable. Omron switches are also fairly rare and not compatible with anything else that I know of, which is somewhat impractical, but as far as curiosities goes, these are definitely among the more entertaining switches I've tried yet. If you do decide to buy a board with these in though, just make sure to have the seller test every single key to see if they all work. That's it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.